Hey everyone, check out this tiny little camera that I have in my hand. Believe it or not, this is an FPV camera for the HD Zero or SharkBite system. Uh, that means this is digital FPV, low latency, high definition. You can see the MIPI connector goes on the back. It's got a super wide FOV lens and it weighs just about 2.1 grams. I am excited about this because I love seeing the technology get better and lighter and smaller, and that makes it appropriate for our smaller and lighter whoops and other builds. And this is less than half the weight of the current uh, nano size cameras for this system. But this is built out of parts completely available on the market today. This is just an old whoop camera, and this is the Runcam Nano HD sensor board and I just 3D printed a body for it. So I want to tell you more about how I built this camera, but first let me throw it into this 1S Whoop so we can try it out properly. If you haven't seen this build, it's 24.8 grams with digital FPV. I made a video about it and there's a link to that in the video description. But you can see right there, that's the Runcam Nano HD camera, same sensor board that I used in here, but you can see how much larger the body is. And that's with a smaller lens. I already had a smaller lens than the stock lens, this is what normally comes on that camera, and you can see just the body and lens are 3.2 grams by itself with no electronics. So this is going to be pretty sweet, and I also printed an even lighter version of this canopy, so I'll be trying that out as well. Here it is with the new camera and canopy, and now the weight is coming in at about 22.8 grams. That is awesome. This was 24.8 grams before. It was already the world's smallest and lightest drone with digital low latency FPV. Now it's fully two grams lighter, which is going to make a huge difference. If you fly these things, you know that every single gram matters. So I'm excited about flying this. Unfortunately, I can't fly it and get footage for you today. I made a mistake when I was doing some mods and I damaged this VTX, but I've got a replacement on the way. In a few days, I'll be able to fly that. If you want to see flight footage, make sure you're subscribed. But in the meantime, there are other ways we can test this camera. To test out the camera, I grabbed another MIPI cable and just plugged it into one of my other HD Zero builds. Uh, if you haven't seen this before, this is the Happy Model Bind and Fly. I think it's called the Mobula 7 HD Zero, and it's a fun little build if you're looking for something in the 2S weight class. But right now, I'm just going to use the VTX to test this camera. Plugging in the battery now. Put my goggles on. Let's see if I pick up the camera this way. There you can see the drone. You can have a look around my messy desktop here. There's a bunch of drones on the wall if you're looking for some detail. I do get a little bit of bloom if I look back at the studio lights. But yeah, and check out how wide this FOV is. Can you tell when I turn it? This might be one of the widest FOV lenses ever put on the HD Zero system. It's not perfect though. If you look over on the left hand side, you see how it's a little bit blurry near the edge and the right hand side is actually I think a little bit sharper. Left hand side is a little blurry if you look at the drones on the wall. Right hand side is a little bit sharper. And what that means is that the lens is not exactly perpendicular to the sensor. If the lens is ever so slightly crooked, then the focusing distance on one side won't be the same as the other. Um, this 3D print is definitely not perfect. And then just to show you how wide the lens is, here's two bottles of conformal coating and I'll move it forward until I can't see either of them anymore. Okay, right now I can barely see one on the right. I can barely see one on the left check out how wide that is. Can you see where my camera is with relation to those bottles? This lens is crazy wide and that's exactly what you want for whoops. I am really excited about this camera. It's going to save a ton of weight and it has a super wide field of view, which is just what you need for whoops, especially for 1S whoop racing. I don't think I've ever tried a whoop camera where I said the FOV was too wide. It's just the wider it is, the better you can see your surroundings. And honestly, I think it helps improve depth perception. You know, with a wide field of view, things get really big, really fast when they get close to the camera. And I get used to that timing and it really helps me understand where I am with respect to the course or the gate that I'm going through. So wide field view is great. And this is a 16 by nine camera. So that's kind of a downside in my mind because you lose a little bit of the vertical field of view. But when the horizontal field of view is so massive, so wide as this one, then even the vertical you can see quite a bit. So I'm excited about this camera. I think a camera like this is going to be the perfect thing for a 1S Whoop with HD Zero. Now the picture quality on this camera that I built, you know, it's not perfect. It looks pretty good in the center, but I don't quite have perfect edge to edge sharpness. And a lot of that comes down to the 3D print and my ability to get this perfectly lined up or rather my inability to do so, but that's okay. My craftsmanship in building this camera isn't really the point of this video. The main thing I want you to see is just that it's possible. 
Uh, if you're adventuresome and you want to build one of these yourself, uh, you can totally do that today. If you're good with a 3D printer, you can probably get it lined up better than I did. But more importantly, if a camera manufacturer wanted to make a camera like this, they obviously could. In fact, they could make one lighter and better than this. If it had an actual molded canopy uh, with real threads for the lens, that would already make it better. If they rearranged the PCB, they could allow an even smaller body and that would save even more weight so they could make it lighter and better than this. And I hope that they will. If you work for uh, Runcam, Foxeer, Cadex, or any other camera company, please make us a ultralight 1S camera for the HD Zero system. It's the perfect thing to complement the 1S VTX and having something this light is what we really need for 1S whoops with digital FPV. Please make one. Just don't sacrifice the FOV. Having a super wide FOV is the one thing you can't give up. Now you're probably wondering how I actually built this camera, so let's go over that now. Uh, it took some experimentation, but it's actually pretty simple in the end. There's just three components, a lens, a 3D printed body that holds the lens, and then the PCB board that goes on the back, and this has the sensor on the other side of it. You can see there's just two little screws here and here, and this is an intact camera. You can see those same screws. There is no glue holding this PCB on, so you can just take it off. Uh, that will expose the sensor, so don't do that until you're ready because you don't want to get any dust uh, or fingerprints on that sensor. And pro tip, if you do it outside, you probably won't have to worry about dust because there's way more dust inside than outside. Here's the lens and the body that normally come with this camera. And the first thing I want to point out is the back of the lens. If I hold it at just the right angle, you can see a red reflection. And that is an infrared filter. It's a filter that blocks infrared light and all FPV cameras are gonna have that. It's either gonna be built into the back of the lens like this, or it's gonna be on the sensor. But the sensor on this board does not have its own IR filter, so it has to come from the lens. So that's our first requirement. Any lens that we're gonna consider has to be one that has an IR filter. Now the lens is threaded, so it just screws on like that. And people refer to this size of lens as an M8 lens, referring to the eight millimeter diameter on this barrel, but eight millimeters is not actually exact. If you measure it from the outside of the threads, one of these lenses is closer to 7.8 millimeters. So 7.8 millimeters is an M8 lens. Now I have a drawer full of old whoop parts and here's some random cameras that I pulled out. And all of these cameras have the same size lens that I used on this build. And I guess you would call it an M7 lens because all of these are about 6.8 millimeters measured from the outside of the threads. Here is an example. I think this is made by AKK, but I could be wrong. If we just unscrew this lens here, we look at the back of it. Did you see that red sheen? See, it's got the IR filter. So this is one that will work. And I actually did test this and it works just fine. The actual lens I used on here came off of a Wolfwoop WT-07 camera. And that's a really old backpack style camera with the camera in the front and the VTX in the back. And I used these for a long time. This is my favorite FPV camera for a long time. And honestly, I was thinking about it recently as something that I might go back to just because these cameras are cheap and it has a legit wide angle view, which is so hard to find on cameras today. But you can see I took the lens off of this one. Oh, this foam, uh, this was the first drone that I made completely waterproof for playing in the pool. This could float on the water. If you haven't seen this, it's a pretty fun video. Search for Mr. Shutterbug and water and uh, you can check that out later. Here you can see another one of those Wolf Loop cameras and the one downside here is they put a lot of glue on the threads and you can see that all the way around here. I mean normally that's a good thing because it keeps this lens from moving but you do have to remove that glue if you want to get the lens off which is what I did for this camera. I haven't tested all the rest of these cameras, but I'm pretty sure they would all work. They all have the same size lens. And the other thing is all of these cameras have about the same size sensor as this Runcam Nano HD. And that's really the main thing. Any lens is gonna focus light. It's gonna have a certain distance to the back plane and it has to be that distance to be in focus. And then the question is how big is the image that it's projecting when it is in focus? And so any of these have a similar sensor size, which is why they work, but if you wanted to do this with the HD Zero brand nano camera, you would get higher quality results, but you'd have to figure out a different lens and I haven't researched that yet. You would need a different lens because this actually has a larger sensor on the back plate, which is part of why it's higher quality, but you would also need a lens that could project that full size. You wouldn't want to have, you know, vignetting in the corners 
or uh, dark sides or something like that if it wasn't big enough. I don't know what lens would work best for this camera, but if you find out, please comment down below. This is the sensor board from a Runcam Nano 3, and this is the original Runcam Nano 3 lens. I'm not really a big fan of the current Nano 3 lens because it has a narrower FOV, but this first lens was pretty good, and check out how light this lens is. Quarter of a gram for this lens. That's awesome. Now, to fit a lens like this on the PCB, you have to have a clearing right around the sensor on the PCB where there's no other electronics to glue it on, and the Runcam Nano HD isn't like that. This one has to mount all the way on the outside. But again, if a camera manufacturer wanted to make something even smaller and lighter, they could totally do so. So yeah, if you basically just take your favorite old Whoop camera with one of these types of lenses where you know you like the FOV, then it would probably work on a build like this. So I'll put the question to you. What analog Whoop camera would you most like to see in a digital format uh, converted into something like this. Do you, do you like the Wolf Whoop WT-07? Do you have another favorite? Comment down below and let's talk about which lenses you think would be the most interesting for this application. So once you've got a lens picked out, all that remains is to make a body that can hold it on there. The body actually has two functions. One is to hold the lens at just the right distance from the sensor and the other is to block out all of the rest of the light from hitting that sensor. So I designed this one. I took a bunch of measurements using my calipers, and then I went into Tinkercad, which is just a free modeling tool, and I mocked it up. But when I printed it the first time, I could not get the lens in at all. And there's two reasons for that. One, I don't actually know the exact thread size for these lenses. I measured and took a guess. If you know exactly what it is, please comment down below. But it wouldn't really matter for me because my printer can't really print threads that are so small, especially in TPU. This is a really stiff form of TPU that I used, but even on the finest setting, it's not gonna make something that just threads right in. So instead, I just kept making the hole bigger until I could get it in. Uh, there's quite a bit of tension because I don't want it to slip, but I can put it in. And as it goes in, it's basically just creating its own threads. That works, but the problem is it's not gonna go in straight. And if it's even a little bit off, then you'll get part of your picture, like half the image will just be way out of focus and the other half will be in focus. So the way I dealt with that was to take a lens cap, put it on here, push it against the table, and then push down hard until it would jump the threads. Because basically, if you can get the lens barrel to the point where it is flush with the body, then you know at that point it's pretty well perpendicular and all that remains is to back out the lens until you get to the right focal distance. Of course, you're gonna want a material that is very opaque because you don't want any light going through the material. And to avoid light leakage on the seam here, I put just a little bit of liquid electrical tape along the edge of the PCB. Man, I wish I could fly it right now in this 1S build. I am looking forward to that. But unfortunately, like I said at the beginning, I did damage this 1S VTX. It was totally my fault, but I was removing this firmware update connector, big bulky white connector right here. I wanted to see how much that would save it saved 0.2 grams, but really not worth it. Being able to update the firmware is important. Uh, the firmware is getting better all the time and you're gonna want those updates. So I do not recommend removing that connector. And when I did it, I was kind of in a rush and accidentally damaged some of the traces on the board that are under there. So that's why this doesn't work anymore. Uh, I feel kind of bad about that. But Daniel English is coming to the rescue. He's got a YouTube channel, ATX Airborne and he had another one of these prototype boards. So he's sending me one, I'll have it in a few days. Big thanks to Daniel. If you wanna go check out his channel and give him a sub, that would be awesome. Uh, he's got some more HD Zero related content as well that you might be interested in, so check that out. If you're thinking of modifying a camera for yourself like I did, then I'll put a list of the exact parts that I used down in the video description text. I have an STL file for the body and I've made public my Tinkercad project for this body. So if you take that, ungroup the model, then you can change all the parameters like the lens diameter, the thread pitch, whatever you gotta do to make it work in your case. Of course, it's not completely without risk. You could damage the camera or the sensor board or something else. Uh, hopefully that is understood. All of that risk is on you. If you're gonna do surgery on a camera, you gotta be prepared for that, but it can totally be done. And if you guys do it, I would love to hear what you come up with down in the comment section below. If you enjoy the content that I make, please do hit that thumbs up button. I would appreciate that because it helps the YouTube algorithm recommend this to more people. If you have questions, reactions, comments, suggestions, let's talk down in the comments section. I'm pretty good at following up on those and there are other ways you can 
follow me as well. I'm on Instagram and Facebook. I'll put a link down in the video description. Uh, I post pictures and videos on Instagram more often than on YouTube just because it's so quick and easy. So you would have seen this camera last week, for example, if you're following on there. So that is another option if you're curious what I'm up to. But yeah, thanks for watching to the end and I'll see you next time.